Hey everyone, we just got the new wave of Black Series figures in from Hong Kong. I have the user on Instagram that I bought these from linked in the description below. And I also have Marek who is a carryover from the last wave because I wasn't able to get him with my last shipment. Today's video is actually just going to focus on the three from the Ahsoka series being Balin, Shin, and Marek. We're going to cover R5 and the Mandalorian in another video, so hit that subscribe button if you want to see that when that goes live pretty shortly after this one. Now I know you are all wondering about this Balin figure, and I am too, so we're going to start with this one. Balin was probably the biggest fan favorite character of the series, and unfortunately the actor did pass away before the show aired, so this character is special for so many reasons to so many people. And there was a lot of talk in the community when this figure was first revealed about whether or not he was too small, so now that I have him in hand, I can kind of take a look and give uh, my opinion on that. At first impressions, he does feel underscaled, uh, but until we really compare him to the other figures in a little bit, we're not going to be able to know for sure. I think the likeness is decent, but I feel like I've seen better likeness from other customizers in the community and also the green on the outfit is just a little bit strong he does actually have a lot of tones of emerald in his costume it's hard to see in the show but we got some glimpses of behind the scenes photos where it's a lot more evident I do think the engineering on this figure is up to par with newer figures I, it's not much of a waist crunch here but I glad they didn't break up the sculpt since he doesn't really ever hunch over that much in the show and then we've got those like free floating shoulder pads and really intense bend at the elbow really nice to see especially from a single joint like that oops there goes his lightsaber and then a decent amount of bend at the knees and then we do have that thigh without the cut at the top, but it does have a decent amount of movement. I don't think it's gonna to be too much of an issue if you're trying to get him into some fight poses with Ahsoka, but personally, I'm just gonna have him looking stoic and cool on my shelf. The lightsaber is quite nice. I did find that it was a little bit bendy compared to a lot of the other sabers that we've had recently. And then we've got the extra large blade that I, I really don't know what the point of this was. They said it's the same size as Malgus, but Malgus is a big figure and he is not. And here it is compared to Shin's, which is a normal Black Series lightsaber. I compared it to Sabine's and they're the exact same length. And with the figure being a little bit under scale, it, look how, keep going, keep, there we go. Yeah, that's almost as big as he is. This just does not feel right. And it just makes the figure feel that much more under scaled. And then once we get the other figures in this wave unboxed, we're gonna go ahead and do some height comparisons with Ahsoka, Hu Yang, Hera, Sabine, and all of the characters in this wave. And I know we're all eager for that. So let's hurry up and get through this. This figure also just kind of disappointed people when it was first revealed. I think it does look better in the hand than it did on the stream and in photos, but I do think that there is a definite something missing in the likeness here. Overall, I think the sculpt and the detail is pretty nice. The hair looks a lot better in hand than it did in photos. Like I didn't really think about the hair much when I was handling this figure. There were other things that bothered me, which I'll get into, but the hair wasn't really one of them. The lightsaber did actually feel a little bit big to me, but I compared it to Sabine and they're about the same. Decent articulation at the elbow. We've got those free floating shoulder pads again, and then good movement at the shoulders here with the butterfly joints. And I forgot to show these for Balin, so that's what his look like. I feel like he gets even closer a little bit more than her. One thing I wasn't crazy about is that her little skirt here is really thick. It kind of reminds me of like the Tuscan Raider or like if you have the Indiana Jones figures, like the Sala figure, it's a lot thicker because she has several layers here. So it just pushes back against the articulation a little bit. And then we see that same swivel at the thighs that Sabine has. And then just the normal amount of articulation over here on the foot. And the armor doesn't get in the way of bending it for just one click. And so I actually think she looks nice as a figure. I think the outfit needs a little bit of weathering, but overall there's not too much I would change. I might do a little bit of a gray wash in the hair to kind of get those roots that she has on her bleached hair. And now we've got Marek, another figure that I think was pretty fumbled. I, the armor is just so light and the orange on it is so intense. We'll see how that actually looks in hand. But first I gotta show you guys how the mural packages all look together since I don't save my boxes anymore and I will be throwing these out. I wish I still had the other Ahsoka boxes to do the full mural, but I just don't have room for that in my place. Okay, and so here he is out of the box and this orange is absolutely way too intense. It doesn't really make sense as rust and the lightness of the armor is just really inexplicable. I understand the idea of wanting to have some rust on here and give it a little bit of a two-tone effect instead of just the flat figure, but if this is rust, then why is it on his pants? Man, I hate when I leave my clothes in the washing machine too long and they get super rusty. And no surprise, I don't really love the cloth goods cloak here. Uh, Mike Case did a review on this and he also really hated this cloak. I don't like the way that just kind of sits around his neck there. Uh, we do have the free floating shoulder pads, the, the bent, really nice bend at the elbow here actually. That's almost like it's a double joint, but it is not. 
Gosh, this deco is so bad. I, I usually give a lot of grace to the Hasbro team. I think their job is really hard and it just, you know, they don't sit around all day just like thinking of figures to make. It's so much more that goes into the execution of toys. And at the end of the day, that's what these are. And they are only $25, but it just doesn't make sense when certain choices are made where, you know, we have plenty of figures that have black armor that look great. And so suddenly switching over to a light gray with a bright orange rust, it just makes no sense because we've seen better from the line in the past. And I really don't think it's fair to compare the Star Wars Black Series to other Hasbro properties like G.I. Joe or Transformers where they own the license. I don't think it's fair to compare them to Hot Toys that are 10 times the price, literally. But I do think it is fair to compare these figures to other figures that exist in the same exact line by the same team. And so when something happens like Balin's height or Merrick's coloring, it does make me really curious as to like what exactly happened and how this was approved, this credit collection figure showing up in the main line in regular packaging. Now I know a lot of people have really strong thoughts on soft goods versus plastic robes, so I think a lot of you guys are gonna laugh at me for using what I know a lot of people think is one of the worst uh, plastic capes in the Black Series, which is the Mandalorians, but I actually think this fits quite nicely. It's the right length. It's the wrong color. I'm going to have to paint it a little bit darker and might have to glue down part of the shoulder or something, but I think this actually looks better than the cloth one that came with it. I know you guys might think I'm crazy. Some people are going to be with me. Some are against, so uh, just let me know what you think in the comments below because I know a lot of people really hate that cape. And now for the most difficult part of the video, the height comparisons to Balin here. He is definitively underscaled. Here we see Merrick and Shin next to him, and he is the same height as Shin, which is super disappointing because Ray Stevenson is 6'3", and Ivana Sakno is 5'8", so there should be a 14 millimeter difference between them. And yes, I actually did that math. I think that's correct. Luckily, he is a little bit taller than Ahsoka and Hera because if you are gonna have him dueling Ahsoka on the shelf, you want him to stand above her a little bit, and maybe you can even get her squatting down a little bit more in a certain pose to like make him look a little bit more intimidating. And just to take a look with Hu Yang, since he is like the tallest figure in the wave, this is what that looks like. So my plan for this, even though he is generally underscaled, like even his head is too small, I think that with a little boost in the thighs, maybe with a swap with a different figure, we can get him looking a little bit taller. And I also think he could use a little bit of a gray wash on the chest to take that green down just a little bit. But anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think of these figures. Reminder to subscribe if you're interested in seeing the other two figures that I just got today from The Mandalorian. And if you wanna see me kind of fix up these figures as best as I can, see what what can be done and maybe something that you can do yourself. In the meantime, sound off in the comments below. Leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you think I could do better or differently in my reviews that you would enjoy a little bit more. In the meantime, here are some other videos from my channel that you might enjoy, and I will see you all very, very soon for the other two figures in this wave.